Hello friends. We uh, are going to do a jewelry sort today. This is the first pre-crazy COVID kind of thing uh, we've been able to get since COVID. The secondhand stores stopped, people quit, and they didn't have anybody to do their collectibles and their jewelry. So they got a new person who's never worked there before, has never seen how the jewelry is bagged before, and she's doing these little snack size baggies for about uh, 10, 15 bucks, and nobody's going to pay that. And, and she's also sorting them like beads, little kids, uh, Hawaiian type necklaces, and so nobody's going to pay that. So I would go every once a week or so, and they would just be these bags nobody was buying. So I mentioned something to the manager, and... She still was doing these big, big bags for $25 each, and you could see there was nothing in them. So I mentioned to him, he's like, we don't see you very often anymore. And I said, well, there's nothing to buy. I come in and I leave without spending anything in the store. And he's like, that's not, you know, usually you find something. And I said, well, it's the prices and nothing in the bag. So I've been, I haven't been to that store in about three weeks. And I dropped in like five minutes before closing and they had a bunch of bags out, but they, uh, we went to a store, the same brand store, but a secondhand store, um, in another city a couple hours away. And they, these bags were $45 stuffed so full. Uh, the whole bag was open, stuffed, taped for 45. And, um, these ones you can see, it's, you can see what's in them. You can see, and, and she's had them for 20. She had this, had them for 15 and now I think she's realizing nobody's buying them because the cabinet was full of them and this one was 12. And they had a whole bunch of them and I only bought one and I don't think it has a ton in it, but we were kind of, she's, I got Princess 5 home with me and we wanted to do a bag. Well, she didn't really want to do a bag. No, we're excited. Let's dig in, Mom. Let's dig in. Let's go. I wanted to do a bag. So, it's not her favorite thing to do. I'm here. I'm excited. Let's stop talking. Let's go. <laughs> so we've got this necklace, which is like two different colors. A long 20s wrap around. Oh, it's stuck in a star earring. Okay. Got my loop and my magnet. So it's kind of confusing because it has two different clasps. How is it supposed to go? Okay, there you go. So they just had it class weird, so you just put it on like that. It's kind of a peach ombre. Yeah. I, w I would never wear it, but it's cute. I would not wear it. Anyway. Goes into Luau box. In fact, this one's not even going to go in. It's kind of already beat up. And here's the start earring that we know is probably not real. Do a little silver watch. What brand does it? It's just time that. That's time X. Is it a wind-up or a... Because wind-ups are quite valuable. I, I think it's just a battery carriage Timex watch. Oh, it's a It's a stretchy band. Yeah. Carriage Timex. I think my favorite part about going through bags is looking at all the pins. Because there's always so many weird pins. Like, this is, looks like a bushel of wheat. A stock? A stock <laughs> going like a bushel? Like a bushel of wheat, yeah. A stock. A bushel is a basket. Oh, this is like a bunch of wheat. What is this called? Oh, is it a stock? It's a stock? I don't know. That's fun pin. It's something to look up. I don't know. Okay, we've got this um, clampy, gaudy bangle. It's not a stretchy kind, so I couldn't give it to like a grandchild or something unless they were older. It's quite... It's quite gaudy. It would be great for a queen costume or something. That's not something somebody would wear, probably. Okay, we've got this. These are like leather, and the clasp is broken. So, um, but somebody might want it. Like, if you haven't watched all my other videos, um, I have some on how to and what we do. Normally, I have several piles. I have get rid of. Um, you, I sell at yard sales. People come. I lay out a huge tarp and dump out all these little bagged jewelry's on the tarp. They sit there for hours and dig through and they get themselves a bag and then they pay me whatever they want for the bag. So that's what I normally do. Um, I have one that if they're really nice things, I'll give them away to like, um, we'll take them and sing at care centers and let like the old, the old ladies, like the pins and brooch, brooches and, um, 
we'll let them pick something and we'll sing to them and move on to the next one. It's just a simple silver bracelet. It's very obviously not. I know, but you gotta test it. Um, this looks like it's a homemade, uh, it's fish, little fishes. Um, it looks like somebody made it homemade. It's not the cutest thing I've ever seen, but it would be fun for a kid at a luau. Um, oftentimes in these bags we find little doodads. This looks like a frame stand or something. Hanger or something. I don't know. Um, there's a silver necklace, but the silver beads are painted on. Oh, we're caught. And so it's chipping off. It's not super great quality, so we're not even going to bother magneting it because <laughs> obviously not silver. It doesn't get. We magnet everything. <laughs> it's plastic beading with the paint chipping off. Could be gold. They could be glass beads. No, <laughs> it's not. No, it's not. Very stretched out elastic bracelet. Is it magnetic or is it just the? It's not no. magnetic. No, I had that exact bracelet at one point. Okay, we've got some knotting going on. I'm gonna take the knots out. She can show you something. Um, there's some cute earrings, which I actually might take. What the heck? Oh, uh, there's a necklace wrapped around them. One sec. Okay. I might actually take these. You can't really see the color that well in here, but they're like a bright turquoise, like a green turquoise. The greeny. Yeah. Kinda. They're really cute, so. Um, we have another watch. Futura. Another stretchy watch. Okay, and... I'm not, I'm not used to doing these. I don't know what you do. What's this? Looks like a necklace. That's what the back looks like. There's like a little hook. And that does look like the clasp at the top does look like something they'd have on a necklace. But it's kind of interesting. It's not. It's a little bit. It's a little bit. Little bit. Like, it's brass coated. There's another watch, but it looks like it's for like a child or like a, like a no, friend. That's an it's old so lady watch. Small. What's the brand? Sometimes those are worth a lot of money if they're a blow up. Um, steel. Steel bat. What is the here? You can look at it through here. Um, base metal. metal. It's a Timex. Oh, it's an old Timex. It's so small. Show them the front of the. Right in there. No glare. A lot of glare. Um, I'm not even gonna. There we go. Finally, broken necklace. Sometimes if they're cute, I'll fix them. Um, other times I'll just sell them for beads. And here's another painted um, beads. A lot of junky stuff. Yeah, I did see a piece of silver in here, and that's the reason I bought the bag. I thought it would be fun to do one. Just another homemade bracelet. Since we haven't done. I know they're not. It's very light, and they kind of feel plasticky. The met that it's actually, and when you get these kind, they're sometimes they're made on metal, and then they have these little clasps on the end, and so they'll be magnetic. Even the plastic beads will be magnetic because of the metal wire running through the bracelet. So there's that. The long necklace with an interesting charm at the end. I wonder if it's, it's not. if it was a reverse, like one that you could change out what's hanging on it. Um, maybe. So it's kind of a similar texture. Yeah, it's a similar kind of a feel. So maybe it was one of those ones that you could hang different. Um, it's a Worthington. Coat factory. That's Burlington. Burlington. That's right, it is. I'm like... Um, oh, this goes to that other necklace I already, it's a broken one. You can see the copper, some kind of a copper brass alloy, something coming through, this is plated. But it w if it was all copper, it wouldn't be magnetic, so it's not all copper. But because it's already pulling through, I think I'm just going to throw it in the recycle bin anyway. Um, another cheapy bracelet. It has like some green fuzz that got caught in it. 
right there. It looks like the ones you use to make boutonniere uh, corsages. Oh, yeah. That's what that looks like. It looks like somebody took a corsage apart. Um, this is just a fake turtle mm -hmm. turquoise um, necklace. Okay. What's that? That's a gold magnetic thing. The turquoise is painted on then? Is it paint it, coming on? It just is so light. Yeah, it, it looks like the turquoise color is painted on. It's like plastic. Yeah. I think this is just one necklace that's all attached at the end. A broken kitty rainbow necklace. Fun! Um, I'm struggling with this necklace. Another Timex watch. Somebody like their Timex. Does it look like a wind up or a. Does it have a battery number in the back? Oh, yes. Um, base metal Brizza, stainless steel, assembled in Mexico. Does the front have a cell battery or something? Quartz written on it? Because no. the wind up watches can go for a lot. I When my oldest daughter was serving as a missionary, it said, please bring a wind up watch. She was in a remote area in the Philippines, and so she needed a wind up watch. And we couldn't find a wind up watch anywhere. I went to tons of secondhand stores. I ended up paying, I think, $35 for a wind up watch at a secondhand store. And the funniest thing was, is it was, I think it was a Timex and it was made, she was going to the Philippines and the watch was actually made in the Philippines. <laughs> and I thought that was a funny, funny thing. Okay. I can't get this apart. I think it's all one necklace. So we're just going to not take that apart. It's got some cute charms on it, but I don't take charms off of things anymore. I've got tons of junk. Um, I have a sister that makes wedding bouquets. I've shared about her lots of times that, um, she likes the little gold and diamondy things. So like the, the diamondy charms, she takes them off and uses them on her bouquets. So she makes flower, them out of flowers and feathers and things like that. Where's that, Megan? I've got it in my hand. Yeah. So this is a, that feels like it could be aluminum. Hey, Mom, I think this might be a gold necklace. Oh, I looked at that at the, the store. And oh, right here. What does that say right here? Yeah, this is, I think this is the gold filled one. Have they had it? I think I saw like 14 karat something. Yeah, it says 14 karat gold filled. So cool. I saw that at the store. So that'll go right into the gold recycling. Uh, Sorry, I'm at the wrong angle here. Okay. Okay, that's right there. Can you see right there? Um, 14 karat GF on the bottom right there. 14 K GF. So what's the difference between something that's gold filled and something that's not gold? Gold plated is there's just a spray or electrical charge put on it so that it will pick up the gold particles. So that's GE, gold electric plate or silver electric plate SE or EP, so it would be GEP, electric plated, or SEP, and then gold filled is, where's the magnet? Is the magnet on them? Yeah. <laughs> picked, picked, up, picked up everything. So um, gold filled is, they mix the gold in. It's it's the in the filling kind of thing. And so it is one, usually they'll put, when you see gold filled, it will say one slash 20, so it's one twentieth part gold, and then they'll put other fillers in with the other twenty percent. So it's it's not a very high amount. So there is some gold in this to give it some sparkle, but um, the only way to get the gold out is to refine the gold. And I have bags of things that I know have gold fill or gold plate on them, and then I have just general like copper or brass, and then I have like garbage um, stuff that is 
tin, aluminum, stuff like that. So I separate them in different containers and then you can, um, but if it's a cute one and I think somebody can hang a cute charm off of it, it does look like it's real gold, but it's not that, you know, you wouldn't, if it broke, you wouldn't lose it. So sometimes when it's in a nice shape like that, I'll keep it for a charm. So say we found a really, really cute charm that was gold that we wanted to wear, and then we could just put it on here and then we would have a necklace. Um, because sometimes the charms are heavy, but they're really pretty. So I do keep these sometimes. I have a little container that I put them in little bags and then I label the containers just for not real jewelry. So if I need a necklace, the girls are saying, hey, my friend wants this charm, you know, or likes, bee, say it's a bee charm. She likes bees. Do we have a necklace I can put the bee on and give it to her? So we do that okay. sometimes. Okay, we've got these cute earrings that almost match what I'm wearing today. Um, there goes. And then we've got a pair of earrings, but they're mismatched. They like, the whoever bagged it thought that they matched, but you can see that one's a little bit darker than the other one. Um... And they are very magnetic. Well, this is some kind of, it's not even plated. And I'm going to show you how you can tell, like, it. The, there's bumps on it. Can you see all those bumps? It's very not smooth. If it's silver, if it's real silver, it's smooth and it's not bumpy like that. You can see that it's, like, very textured and you can run your fingers until it's very bumpy. I mean, it's kind of cute. Somebody might like that. So I'll put that in the, you know, yard sale pile. And it's got a good length chain, so it would be cute on somebody that wanted to wear it. So we, we have the different piles that we put them in. Got a creepy little owl charm right here. It's not silver. It is kind of. And this um, turquoise is plastic, so. Um, I showed you the one earring. So they feel like they're aluminum almost. They're very, very thin. But I will always double check. Usually if they have this kind of back, they're not real silver. But I take that off and I look with the loop and I also run my finger. I do the finger test. If it's if it's got bumps on it, it could be written silver with laser on this little stem here. So I always double check um, to make sure we're not throwing away or you. I would probably recycle them because I don't think anybody would want to wear these, but they're not real. Um, we have an Avon pin that says, I love you, grandmother, on the back. <laughs> <laughs> and grandma at the, you, the care center or nursing home is going to love that. She'll take that as her her little prize. There's a really cheap kids fair. Yep. Thing. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. A turquoise puka shell bracelet. So it's kind of close. Not to make a car seasick. Uh, definitely not silver. Sometimes I will keep um, bigger their bracelets if they have a good clasp. Not this big. This is really big. Um, but I'll use them for charms and giving some charms away. Well, like we have exchange students or something. I want to give them a charm bracelet. I have a bracelet I can give them. Earrings. This happens a lot. What do you do? Anything special with silver earrings? Um, if they're diamondy or blingy I give them to my sister or keep them for her bouquets and if they're just plasticky like that um and there's nothing I just throw them away like we I don't even know what we would do with that so I sometimes will take off the earring part so like um one of the girls came in with about six bags of earrings um a few weeks ago and said these earrings are stems are hurting my ears do you have any other ones? And so we just went through my scrap jewelry, took off some better earring dangly parts and transferred them on. And then she's been wearing them and loving it. So there's a charm, kind of a tinny sounding necklace. All right. That's the reason I bought it. The, the necklace this? she's got in her hand right it. there. Okay. So this was the one I could see that I bought. I could see that it, the, the first thing I could see, if you look at my other videos, you know, is the clasp. I look at the, the clasp, and if there is anything that looks like this on the clasp, that usually indicates that it's a higher quality. Now, that is used to because China is now putting that on all their junky jewelry. So you have to just be able to have a loop or look at it and see if it has value. So then I pulled out my magnet at the store in the bag and I 
use the magnet to see if I can pick it up and I couldn't pick it up. It's picked up some lint though. And then I try and pick up it, the charm through the bag and the charm wasn't magnetic. So that is a good sign. It was not magnetic. And then I get the loop out and I look at it through the loop and it says Italy. Italy's a good sign. <laughs> 925. Usually if it says Italy, but China will now put Italy on their thing. So you have to use a magnet. The loop doesn't always work. Um, so the first thing I'll do is look at the, the little thing and see if I can see Italy on it. Sorry, my nails are really dirty. Um, but so you can see it says 925 on that one side and Italy on the other. And then um, I look at the joints. So if it's cheap, it has a, a chain that is not sealed. If it's more expensive, it usually has a seal. And that means they used the silver or gold to attach it to itself so that there's no openings to get caught on your, your clothes or to pull off. Also, the same with the charms. If it's a cheap charm, let me show you a cheap charm. Okay, so there's a cheap, well, that's not attached very well. Because normally there'll be like a, a like a, like, you know, like when they try to hook it together, there's like that little space and sometimes your necklace will fall out of that. That's there's happening a before. There's a gap right there. Yeah. You can see there's a little gap. That's the cheap one is not going to be sealed. They're not going to take the time to solder it closed. So um, when you see that soldering um, on the chain, that is usually an indicator and there's no opening on the little jump ring thing. That is an indicator that it is usually a higher quality item. So also the same on the charm. If the charm is attached like this with no gaps and no um, seams, then it usually means that it, um, well, obviously like, um, so you can see on this one that's cheaper, there is a little push latch right there so that you can get it on and off the chain by just pushing it in. I have seen gold actually on these types before, real gold, um, from like the 70s and early 80s, but then they turn to um, more Soldered. similar soldered, no no holes, no push, push pin uh, spring. And then you can look at the charm. If it's a real charm, like if it's real gold or real silver, it's always marked on the charm somewhere. So it's a marked on the chain and it's marked on the charm. So on this charm, I see 925, um, which, means it's silver. which means it's either silver or gold. Most of the time they'll use the carrot system for gold, but not always. Sometimes they'll use 925 as pure gold. Um, well, not pure gold, but um, higher quality gold. It's a standard. 925 is a standard for sterling. Uh, anything higher than that is quite soft. So the 925 is usually what they'll use for jewelry um, with gold and silver. But um, so this says 925 and then it says CZ. So it's got cubic zirconias on it somewhere. So if you look at the charm, you can see like just back here, you can't really tell. But if I use the loop, you can tell that it's got these little diamonds in it. And those are cubic zirconia diamonds. So they're not real, but it is 925 silver and or gold, or it could be gold overlay, but it doesn't say that it's gold plated. So my feeling is that it could be, um, there could be some, well, it would have to be overlaid on that per se because it's silver on the back. So there would be that gold overlay on that, but the, the necklace itself could be gold. It looks like it could be tarnished silver but it also could be gold. It gets very tarnished. So if you look at it, you can see there's dark, dark areas. So what I do is you never pull the chain apart like this when you're doing it. So when, you, when I'm rubbing it, I don't pull it like that because you don't want to break it. So what I know, and I don't ever pull it away from here because it can ruin the soldering. So what I normally do is I'll hold the chain itself in a double strand, and then I'll just rub my fingers gently down over it in the same area for a minute and you'll be able to tell the difference when I, I'll show you my fingers and I'll show you where I where I've polished and where I haven't polished. All you'd have to do is wear this for a few minutes and you can see where I've pulled off the tarnish in that area. And then that area is a lot shinier 
than that tarnished area. You can see where I've just run my fingers on it. It's very shiny. So looking at it, it looks like it it's gold. So that was a very good buy at the secondhand store for $12 bag. This was the reason I bought it because I could tell it did look gold and I could see that the charm had 925 on it and I could see that the little thing on there had it. And also another thing you can do is sometimes the, the clasp will break when people are wearing it or a kid pulls on it. So this will say it's you know, 14K or 925, and then the clasp itself will be magnetic. So you'll you'll do this, and it will be magnetic. And right now it is magnetic because sometimes if it's if it's gold, especially silver, it usually won't be magnetic. But gold, um, 14K gold or 24 karat gold or whatever is very soft, and so it's not good for the entire clasp. So they'll add some alloy into the clasp to make it stronger so that it won't break. So oftentimes the clasps will have some kind of magnetism to them, but this side usually does not. So there's no magnetism down there, but there is magnetism in the clasp, and that is very common with gold, so um, that they don't want you to lose it. So then you can just wear it next to your skin, and it will polish up as you wear it, or you can just watch a video or something and, and just gently. I'm not pulling very hard. You just gently rub your fingers on it um, as you're watching a show or something. You're just doing – it's not it's not a really, you know, mind – boggling thing you're doing. It doesn't take a lot of thought process. So you can just do that and then your fingers will look like that. Uh, polished cloths I don't use on these fine jewelry because it will snag sometimes and I won't be able to feel it how much I'm pulling on it or a little bit. I'll get down to this part and I'll actually, I have broken several necklaces when I was trying to use the polishing cloth and I was in a hurry. So when it's gold or fine, really fine chain like this, I, I won't use the polishing cloth. I'll just wear it for a few hours and it will wear off and it will start to shine right up. So, And if you have any more questions about how to find silver or gold, um, my mom's made other videos on how you can find those and, and make them look new. So I have a, a channel on my YouTube channel. My channel is The Secret is Gratitude. And you can just go to the channel and then I have playlists and you can just click on the jewelry search playlist and up will come all the ones I've shown how to tell the difference between different types of gold, uh, 10 karat, 14 karat, 20, you know, uh, and silver, the different types of silver and how I, um, why I do this, how I do it. There's stories about all the different things I do with the jewelry, how to fix jewelry, how to shorten necklaces, things like that. So how to make earrings out of clamp earrings out of, um, into pierce earrings, things like that are on there. So there's plenty. And then on my blog, the secret is gratitude.com. I always do a blog post and then a video so that if people can't get video for some reason, they can read how to do it on the blog post. So you can check that out as well. If you have any questions, feel free to check, check out my social media. Thanks for watching. And I hope you have a very blessed and safe day.